the night journey. One calm night in Mecca, one year before the migration to Medina, the roof of the Prophet Muhammad's house was opened while he was sleeping and the noble angel Gabriel came towards him. He opened his chest, removed his heart and washed it with Zamzam water. He then brought a vessel made of gold containing wisdom and faith. He emptied the vessel into the noble chest of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then closed it up. Gabriel woke the Prophet, peace be upon him, and took him by his hand to the gate of the sacred Kaaba. There the Prophet, peace be upon him, saw a white creature, smaller than a mule, larger than a donkey, with wings on each side of its hind legs. The Prophet, peace be upon him, mounted the creature and they took off north to Beit al-Maqdis in Jerusalem. This part of the journey is referred to as al-Isra. الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير. After dismounting the creature, the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered Al Aqsa Mosque and prayed two units. He then saw the Prophet's Moses. Jesus and Abraham, peace be upon them all, and was instructed to lead them in prayer. Next, Muhammad, peace be upon him, mounted the creature again and set off, shooting out of the solar system into the heavens. This ascension is known as Al Miraj. Gabriel led the Prophet, peace be upon him, to the Lot tree. At this point of the Prophet's journey, Allah spoke to him directly and revealed to him the last verses of Al-Baqarah. It is during this miraculous journey that Allah made the daily prayers compulsory. Initially, 50 daily prayers for the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his followers. After the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received these instructions from Allah, he came down until he passed by Moses, who asked about the acts of worship Allah had prescribed for him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, informed him about the 50 prayers, Moses said, your people will not be able to perform 50 prayers each day. I tried the people before you. I had to deal with the children of Israel, and it was very difficult for me. Go back to your Lord and ask him to reduce the burden on your people. The Prophet, peace be upon him, did so, and Allah reduced it by 10. But when he came by Moses again, he suggested that he return and request a further reduction for the same reason, so he returned. Muhammad, peace be upon him, continued to go back and forth between his Lord and Moses until Allah said, There will be five prayers every day, each being rewarded as ten, thus making it equivalent to fifty daily prayers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by Moses once more and informed him of the five daily prayers. Moses repeated that he should go back again. However, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I have asked my Lord till I am too shy to face him. I accept this and submit to him. On this journey, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was taken to paradise where he saw dwellings made of pearls and their soils made of musk. He was also taken to hell where Allah revealed to him scenes from the future. He saw people receiving terrible punishments for different sins. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then returned home to find his bed still warm. <laughs> عندها جنة 
المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى Till this day, over 1400 years later, over 1.6 billion people all around the world perform these five daily prayers as revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, by his Lord. Since that revelation and with the spread of Islam, this prayer is performed in many countries outside of Arabia, with approximately 400 million in Africa, 10 million in the Americas, over 60 million in China, half a million in Australia, 700 million in Southeast Asia, 60 million in Europe, and wherever else Muslims may be, they respond to this call to prayer. In this film, through authentically recorded sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions, we will describe the manner in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed as he instructed us to, when he said, pray as you have seen me pray. Hygiene in Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that cleanliness is one half of faith. General hygiene. Fingernails and toenails should be clipped. Pubic hair and armpits should be shaved at least once every 40 days. A moustache should be closely trimmed clear of the mouth. After one uses the toilet, the private parts should be cleaned free of filth, using water if available. Any traces of filth must be washed from the body and clothes before prayer. If one is going to pray with his or her shoes on, they should check and remove any trace of filth from beneath them before they pray in them. One should smell pleasant and generally keep a neat and tidy appearance. It is reported that when Al-Hassan, the son of Ali, prayed, he would wear his best clothes. When he was asked about this, he said, Verily, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty, so I beautify myself for my Lord. One of the three things Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved was perfume. Wudu ablution. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Allah does not accept the prayer of one who has nullified his ablution until he performs it again. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The key to paradise is prayer, and the key to prayer is cleanliness, ablution. Intention The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The reward of deeds depends upon the intention, and a person will get the reward according to what he has intended. The intention here means that one must have cleared their heart and mind and focused purely on perfecting the ablution in order to please their Lord. Saying Bismillah in the name of Allah. Before beginning the ablution, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would say, in the name of Allah. Bismillah. Washing the hands. Muhammad, peace be upon him, poured water on his hands and washed them three times, rinsing the mouth.
He then rinsed his mouth three times. Rinsing the nose. Then he sniffed water into his nostrils using his right hand and blew out using his left hand three times. Washing the face. He then washed his face three times. Washing the beard. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would run his fingers through his beard. Washing the forearms. Then he took a handful of water and washed his right forearm and again took another handful of water and washed his left forearm. Wiping the head. Then he wiped his head and entered his two index fingers into his ears and wiped the backs of his ears with his thumbs, washing the feet. And he washed his feet up to the ankles three times. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, made ablution, he would enter the water between his toes with his little finger. Supplication. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If one completes and perfects the ablution, and then says, I testify that there is no God except Allah, the one who has no partner, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger, the eight gates of paradise will be opened for him, and he may enter through any gate he wishes. أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Summary: Make an intention and say Bismillah. Wash the hands. Rinse the mouth. Rinse the nose. Wash the face. Wash the beard. Wash the forearms, wipe the head, and wash the feet. General points about ablution. Water usage. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to perform a complete ablution with just two handfuls of water. Brushing the teeth. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, If I had not found it hard for my followers or the people, I would have ordered them to clean their teeth with siwak, the Muslim toothbrush, for every prayer. Beginning with the right. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved to begin with his right side while cleaning or purifying himself. Washing each part. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, performed ablution, washing each part once, twice or three times, except the head, which he only wiped once. Tayammum, dry ablution. Inna 
Make an intention, saying Bismillah. Strike the palms of the hands once on clean earth, such as sand, or any clean surface on which dust has collected. Blow off the excess. Wipe each hand up to the wrist. Wipe the face. What nullifies ablution? After one uses the toilet, touching the private parts, loss of consciousness, deep sleep, passing wind. When bathing is required, performing ghusl. After sexual intercourse, after having a wet dream, after menstruation, period, after postnatal bleeding. Performing ghusl, bathing. Make an intention, saying Bismillah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, washed both hands three times. He would then pour water from his right hand to his left hand and wash his private parts. Next, he performed a complete ablution. Then he took some water and put his fingers to the roots of his hair to the extent that he sees that the skin is wet. Then he poured water over his head three times and then over the rest of his body.